Welcome to Kinesio Journal Club. I'm your host, Dr. Fabia. So every month, I'm going to be presenting a new journal article, a research article on kinesio taping. So this month's article is out of researchers out of Turkey. The article is called Early Results of Kinesio Taping and Steroid Injections in Elbow Lateral Epicondylitis, a Randomized Controlled Study. So if you saw our very, very first episode where I went over different types of experiments, you can tell just by the title that this is a high quality study. They did a randomized controlled trial, which is one of the best levels or best types of experiments uh, researchers can do. This article was published this year in 2021 in March. So a little background about the article. Lateral epicondylitis is a chronic and degenerative disease of the elbow or on this side. You probably know it as tennis elbow and is usually caused by repetitive motions. It's an overuse syndrome of the elbow and the extensor muscles of the forearm. And you can think of like tennis, like that's why they get um, tennis elbow. It causes pain and tenderness on this side of the elbow. It affects up to 3% of the general populations. And when you break that down into subpopulations, it's about 15% in heavy industrial workers. It affects females and males pretty equally, and it generally afflicts adults, so people between ages of 34 and 55. So the, the treatments are varied. You can have surgery for tennis elbow, but there's also conservative treatments that we all know about. So you can try oral or topical anti-inflammatories like you know NSAIDs, Advil. Steroid injections are an option. You can be like in a cast or immobilized. You can do shock wave therapy, laser therapy, hot cold applications, so using heating packs, ice packs, um, and exercise like physical therapy and electrotherapy. There's also a newer treatment out, but the treatment itself is not new. It is kinesio taping. It was developed by Dr. Kase in the 70s. Um, so you can use it for myofascial pain syndrome, if you have subacromial impingement, if you have lymphedema, any sort of tendinitis, if you're having knee pain, shoulder pain, it can be used for a whole bunch of different pains. Back to tennis elbow or lateral uh, epicondylitis. CSI, not the TV show, but corticosteroid injections is the preferred treatment generally. It's been reported to be superior to the other conservative treatments that I listed earlier. But there are some bad parts to it. It seems to only give short-term relief, which then leads to a high recurrence rate. And on top of that, the side effects can be very severe. So you can get osteomyelitis, bone infections, cellulitis, soft tissue infections, ecchymoses, uh, adipose tissue atrophy, hypopigmentation. So uh, when you get a steroid uh, injection, it's not really a benign treatment with no side effects. The side effects can be serious. The objective of this study was to compare the early results of kinesio taping as an alternative method for treatment of LE and compare it to corticosteroid injections and a rest and medication group, which would be kind of like the control of the study. So the researchers, they recruited patients from orthopedic and trauma clinics in 2018 and 2019. The patients were aged between 18 and 70, and there were some inclusion criteria. So the patients had to test positively in a clinical test for lateral epicondylitis. So some of those tests include the Mills test, the Mosley test, and the Cozen's test. The patients also had to experience pain in their lateral elbow for at least six weeks to be included in this study. The exclusion criteria were even longer. So anyone who has like a rheumatologic disorder or autoimmune disease or diabetic neuropathy, because those type of conditions 
won't really respond to a injection because it's a whole systemic process. Um, if you're pregnant, if you had any sort of local or systemic infections, if you had an allergy to the tape or to the steroid, you were excluded from the study, meaning you cannot participate in the study. So this is a graph of the demographics of the patients. So it kind of just explains who the people were and what they had who participated in the study. It also breaks it down into each of the groups. So you can see we had three different groups. We had the corticosteroid group, we had the kinesial tape group, and we had the RMG group, the rest of medication group. Overall, we had 53 elbows included. I say elbows because it wasn't just people. Some people have bilateral elbow pain, and so each of the elbows were counted that were treated in this study. So there were 53 elbows that were treated. The average age was around 47. Despite this disease uh, equally afflicting men and women, this study had more men um, than women. It also shows that most people were right-handed and their affected hand was mostly the right hand. The next through next four lines, those show the different tests that were used to evaluate their pain and their functional status. So one of the levels is the VAS scale, a visual analog scale. You've all seen it in the doctor's office. It is a line of smiley faces and the first one is at zero and it's a very, very happy face. And then number 10 is like a very unhappy face. The worst that you can imagine. The worst, worst, worst pain that you can like ever feel. Like think about being in a horror film and you know being chopped up into little pieces. That's a 10. So these patients were asked, how bad is your elbow pain on the scale of zero to 10? And the average answer was eight. The lowest answer was six and the highest was nine, which means that these patients were in a considerable amount of pain and their elbow issues were affecting their quality of life. As I mentioned in the very, very beginning, this was a randomized trial. So that means that patients weren't just placed in a group, a treatment group, as like the researchers want to put some people in here and all people there, they were randomly selected. So their, the way they randomly selected people were picking days of the week and saying when patients called on Monday, they were placed into the kinesial taping group. If patients called on Wednesday, they received the cortical steroid injection. And if they called on Thursday, they were in the rest and medication group. And so this is how they randomized their participants. This is a general overview of their study. So they started off with 81 people who had were diagnosed with LE, but for some reason they could not participate. Either they did not fit the inclusion criteria or they hit one of the exclusion criteria. They didn't sign the proper paperwork or they just didn't show up when the study started. So after they had those 83 people, it got whittled down to 50, and then those people were divided into the three treatment groups I mentioned earlier, kinesial tape, corticosteroid injection, and rest and medication group. The kinesial taping group got taped three times. The tape was left on for five days. The CSI group got one injection at the start, and the rest of the medication group, well, I mean, they got rest for the whole time, and they got medication for up to two weeks. So in the kinesial tape treatment group, uh, the patients were taped by certified kinesial tapers, and the tapers did use kinesial tape as the type of tape. They used muscle and area correction techniques. The patients kept the tape on for five whole days and were instructed not to remove the tape. There were a total of three tape applications throughout the duration of this study. And here is a picture of the way they taped the participants in that group. Next, for the corticosteroid injection group, they got a single injection of triopsinolone that was applied to the most painful part of their elbow. So the rest of the medication group, 
they were told to modify their daily activities so that you know they didn't hurt their elbow and to rest. They were allowed to use uh, Tylenol or acetaminophen or NSAIDs um, like Advil for the first two weeks, but that was not um, under any sort of protocol. So if they felt like they were in pain, they could choose to use some sort of medication for the first two weeks. So how do they measure how do these treatments work? Well, first they did a pre-treatment evaluation. So before they did the treatment, they evaluated people on five different tests. So they did the NERSH, NERSH uh, lateral epicondylitis scoring scale. They did the visual analog scale, the quick disability arm, shoulder, and hand scale the patient-related elbow evaluations, and they used a grip test. So they use all five of those ways to evaluate the patient before they got any sort of treatment. And then they were evaluated again on week two and on week four. Now this is a very overwhelming chart. All the results from this whole study, they managed to put it in one chart which is quite an accomplishment. So when we're looking at research studies, you'll hear something quite often called, or a question asked, like, is that statistically significant? Is that significant? I won't get into all the different stats tests, but there's something we call a p-value. And we wanna see that the p-value is less than 0 0.05. And in this chart, they nicely bolded everything, every result, that was significant. So you, can, you don't have to look at the numbers, you can see, oh, that p-value is bold, that was a significant change. And what does it mean to be significant? It means that that change didn't happen just by random. It means that whatever you did caused that um, change. So in, in this case, that these treatments cause that patient to get better. They didn't just randomly get better. Whatever the researchers applied to them made them get better. But if it's not significant, that means that it was just random, like that treatment did not work. So to summarize that big chart, pretty much all groups in week two had significant improvements in all the tests. But if we break it down a little bit more, we can see that the corticosteroid injection group was superior to the rest and medication group in all parameters except for in the Q-dash test. The CSI was also superior to the kinesio tape group in two tests, in the extended VAS and the pre-T scores. And there was not a big difference in the, difference, in the significance between the KT group and the RMG group at week two. But that being said, everyone improved. So no matter the treatment you were in, the patients felt better um, from week zero to week two. But then they did another evaluation at week four. And again, we saw that all three groups, whether you got an injection, kinesio tape, or rest, you improved um, in your Q-dash score, in your pre-T score, your VAS score, and your extended VAS score. Now this is where it gets interesting. The hand strength actually declined in the RMG and the CSI groups. Um, they didn't decline overall from like week zero to week four, but from week two to week four, there was actually a small decline where the kinesio taping group continued to improve. At the end of the four weeks, corticosteroid injections were not any better than kinesio taping. They, the, it was not superior. CSI was superior to uh, rest of medication group in all parameters. And the kinesio taping was superior to the uh, rest of medication group in all parameters except one. So in conclusion, all three treatments the CSI treatment, the kinesio taping treatment, the rest of medication treatment groups, all those patients increased their function and decreased their pain at week two. But when we look at the scores at week four, kinesio tape was the only one to continue to see improvements in everything at the, at the end of week four. 
So at the end of week four, all the other tests also saw general improvements, but there was some decline in the hand grip test. But kinesio taping did not decline and continued to get stronger. So the researchers of this article, they concluded that kinesio tape is a good method for treating uh, lateral epicondylitis, tennis elbow, and it is as, as effective as using a cortical steroid injection while avoiding the negative side effects of the steroid injections, such as the bone infections and the tissue infections. Now, this is a journal club. So that was just me describing what the researchers had said in the article. I'm now going to pull apart um, their paper a bit. I'm going to start with the strengths of the paper. So first, I love that the patients were randomized. Although I have to say, it was kind of a strange way to randomize your patients. Like patients who called on Monday, Wednesdays and Thursdays, well, what happened to the patients who called on Tuesdays or Fridays? Um, is there, and if you notice, there were more patients who were in the kinesial taping group, which was on Monday. So that means that likely more patients called on Monday. Is there a reason why they called on Monday? Like they had more accidents on Saturday and Sunday and they had to get in on Monday? Uh, it's, it's unclear. But it was good that they did randomize it, that the patients were not selected based on a researcher's bias. I also loved that there were three groups of patients and they included a control. So they were comparing corticosteroids to kinesial taping and then they had people who pretty much didn't do anything, the control. So that way we could compare, is kinesial taping better than doing nothing? Is kinesial taping better than doing corticosteroid injections or vice versa, is doing nothing better than taping? Uh, so I like that they looked at it from all sides. Another bonus of this paper is that they use multiple ways to evaluate their patients. As we noticed, different tests reflected different strengths. So sometimes one uh, treatment was good in everything but one, and a different test, a different treatment was good in everything but a different test. And if they only used one test, it would not have been so well-rounded. So by using five different ways to evaluate their patients, we really got a good understanding of how these treatments affect the patients. I also like that they did not use sham taping. Sham taping is often used as a way to be a control for um, the tape group. Sham taping is where you you'd place tape, but not in a way that a person who is certified in taping would use it. So if you are going to place a tape like from here to here, a sham tape might do it from here to here. But as the studies show that sometimes sham taping does help patients feel better. But I think that's because tape is tape. So the tape is made to lift the skin up. So if they placed it wrong, you're still getting more skin lift and more blood flow and more lymphatics. So even though it's not the best way to tape, you still are increasing um, the healing function of that area. And the authors of this agreed that sham taping isn't the best control and thus they didn't use it. There were quite a few weaknesses that I found in this study. The evaluators were not blind. So it would have been best if the people who were giving the strength test to the patients did not know what type of treatment the patient got. So they didn't know if they were in the RMG group, the kinesio taping group, or the CSI group. But these people did. So that could create some sort of bias in there. The use of medications in the RMG group. That part was a little worrisome in the way it was handled because it was up to the patients to decide whether or not they wanted to take the medicines, which makes sense in a practical clinical standpoint. But from a research standpoint, they didn't list who took medicines, how often, or how much. So I don't know if like one person took medicines or if everyone took medicine. And that can be a confounding factor there. The paper also had a short follow-up, which they acknowledged. It was just to show early results. So it was only evaluating at week two and week four of treatment. 
The diagnosis of a tennis elbow uh, was made by clinical findings and not by imaging, which again is a practical thing. It's not, no one usually uh, gives you that diagnosis by sending you to radiology to get an MRI, um, but that would be a very definitive way to say like, oh yes, you are having some tendon injury. Now I'm just getting a little nitpicky. In the demographic table, they did not list the pre-T scores. They listed all the other um, tests that they did at the, at the evaluation before they started treatment, but they didn't list everyone's um, pre-T scores before they started treatment. I also didn't like that there weren't any graphs. That one chart had all the data that you needed to interpret. Like it was great, but it was a little hard to see like, oh, which treatment worked better. And if they had had a chart where you could see like, oh, it's going up or going down, it would have been a lot easier to interpret. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the randomization technique was just a, a little strange, but it worked. Now this is the Kinesio Journal Club. So I'm gonna, I have some more questions about their um, taping. What type of tape was used? They said they were using Kinesio tape, but Kinesio tape has four, uh, four types of tapes and they're used for different things. So it would have been good to know what type of tape they used. They mentioned that the tapers had certifications, what type? Are they instructors, practitioners? That would have been good information to know. Um, even in like how long they've been taping. Are they new? Are they really experienced? And what level of tension were they using? There was a very, very brief mention of tension. And they said uh, they used full tension at one point. Well, we don't typically use full tension too much in our kinesio taping methods. Um, maybe they meant like near, til uh, near full tension because if you are taping for tendon or ligaments, you do use quite a bit of tension, 50 to 75%. So I would have uh, preferred if they had used percentages in there to relay what type of tension they used at different parts. But overall, it was a great study and if you want to read the full text of it, you can head over to kinesiotaping.com and this will be under published research. And in the comments, if you have any ideas of strengths or weaknesses or any questions about the article, feel free to leave a comment. And here's a picture of me using a kinesio tape for a weak wrist. <laughs> have a good day.